Hi, so this is a quick movie about the Castle Game Engine editor. So the editor is an optional tool to create and compile Castle Game Engine projects and design 2D and 3D worlds and interfaces. So you can open it, create a new project, goes like this. Okay. So the bottom part is just a preview of the files in your project. In the future we will show you some nice thumbnails of the three-dimensional models you have created. Now you can already compile and run this project. Okay, so you go to run, compile and run, and it goes like this. Now, as you can see, as you saw, this actually uses under the hood the Castle Game Engine build tool called Castle-Engine. And the build tool is used to compile and run the project, and actually it can also do a couple of other interesting things in your project, like package it or generate textures. So for compilation, Castle Game Engine tool, of course, actually simply calls the free Pascal compiler. Okay. And once it's compiled, the application is run, and the output shows the log from the application. So this is something that contains some uh, default log from the engine, but you can also easily write to it yourself from your own application, not putting here anything you find useful. Now, you can, of course, edit the source code using the Pascal editor you like like Lazarus, or Atom, or Emacs, or anything you prefer. Okay, so just use, let's use Lazarus here. So this is the main unit of the application. As you can see, this is mostly a standard custom game engine initialization. We create a window, we assign it to application by window, and that's more or less it. Now, when it comes to creating the user interface, it does something, well, special. It simply loads the user interface using this line, from the file called main.castle-user-castle-interface, okay? And this is, of course, the file that you can create, you can edit it using the Castle Game Engine Editor. So, let's try to do it now, okay? So, we go back to the editor, okay? So, we call it a designer file, and you can open it using design, open menu, okay? Now, inside the designer, well, the left part shows the components that we have loaded. Okay, so you have a group that basically, well, it's a user interface that contains everything inside, like a rectangle. And it contains a scene manager, which is something that can contain 3D or two-dimensional world. And it contains some rectangle, which is just a simple colored rectangle, and the button and the label. Okay. Now, what we can do now is we can, for example, move things around using the Select Translate Resize tool. Okay, so we go like this, and we can do this or this okay you can also move children controls inside of course and you can change the properties of any control you'd like at the right you have a simple object inspector that shows the properties of our object for example let's call it to really a label and it works okay of course True. Uh, we can change any property you really like, so it's a button. You can also change the name that will be used from the code to refer to this component. Okay. And on the advanced tab, you can actually see all the properties that are serializable of this component, and you can change them as well. Um, for example, let's change the font scale to make it a little bigger. Okay. Mm. So you can resize, you can move user interface controls, and you can also add new controls, of course. So let's select the rectangle as a, as, as, as a group, as, as a parent for our new control. And let's add here a user interface component that is actually... Uh, let's start with an image, okay? Oh, so this is an image. Okay, so, you have, so let's change the URL of the image to show something interesting. Like... Okay, we can move it, just like any other user interface element. You can also resize it, but by default the image has the same size as the, the image control has the same size as the underlying image file. But you can change it, for example, yeah. you can set the stretch property to true, and now we can resize it freely. You can even force it to keep some proportions, to keep the same aspect ratio as we'd like, but still allow us resize it like this okay uh, okay so what's more well let's dive let, let's look at the, the user interface is simple right so let's look at the underneath 
what's called the scene manager. Okay, but at the beginning, let's actually see that it works. That I can save the scene and I can run the application and it will really reflect what you have just designed. You don't really need to compile it, you can simply run it now and it works. Button works, the camera underneath works. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at the scene manager underneath. So I will delete this rectangle because it's actually getting a little in the way. So by default the scene has some very simple three-dimensional model loaded that simply shows well the sphere and the box as you can see. But you can load here something more interesting. Like let's go here, let's go here. Okay. So this was a bit this looks from a bit too close by default, but we can use the design camera view all option to restore a nice view. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. Uh, what else? Well, the scene manager doesn't have to always occupy the full screen. You can select, you can set its full size property to false. Okay, so let's go to scene manager, full size false. Huh? It's a normal user interface control. So it has a size, it can be moved around on the screen. You can resize it as you like. Okay, you can even create multiple scene managers on your screen. It all works. Um, okay, let's restore the full size actually for a sec because I want to show uh, something else. So let's delete the scene and you can also add uh, two dimensional scenes to your project. So you go add two dimensional scene and now let's load something two dimensional like this. Um, actually let's load this one okay now by default the two-dimensional scene is quite large but as you saw you can use the scene camera manager camera view all basically see everything nicely and it works okay so if you look under the hood the design field is just a serialization of pascal classes to json you can actually open it with any text editor you like i will use lazarus in this case okay and it looks like this all the anchors, all the heights, everything is written here. You should not ever edit it directly, but, well, it's a simple text file. Um, loading this, this file in your application creates regular classes, of, uh, regular instances of classes like the custom button, the custom scene, and so on. So the important thing is that you can modify it from code, attach events, like on click, and so on. And this is quite flexible. You can wrap any Tecastle user interface descendant or any Tecastle transform descendant in a designer field. So you can use this feature basically as little or as much as you'd like. And what I really mean by this is, for example, that you can do in code something like this. Okay. Add this rectangle to your program, and to this rectangle only you add another main user interface. You, you add another user interface loaded from file. So you can do it, and if you'd like to, you can also instantiate the same user interface multiple times. So you could do things like this. Okay, we we'll create another rectangle, rect two in this case, and this another rectangle could be moved. It can be anchored. Oops, sorry. Let's complete this. Let's complete this. So there's another rectangle it could be anchored, for example, to a different side of the screen. And it would just show the same interface, but loaded a second time inside your application. Okay, so this works. Um, so you can design. You can also use any root component, uh, well, as a root inside your designer file. The idea is that you can, for example, design a special, uh, a specially configured custom button, and then you can use this specially configured custom button throughout your application using the designer files. Yeah, okay, and um, this is it for now. You can read more about the editor at the Custom Game Engine website and news. Link in the description of this video. And if you like it, please support this work by subscribing to us on Patreon. The link to do it is also in the description. And thank you!